right, so this video should be pretty short and sweet. I want to show you uh, a quick application of the spectral sequence for a double complex, and then we'll do a longer one in the next video. So let's let C be a first quadrant, I was about to say spectral sequence, but a first quadrant double complex. And we saw in the last video that there were two ways to filter that complex, giving us really filtrations of the total complex. We started with the column filtration, and then that gave us a spectral sequence with E2 page that is really roughly the horizontal com or sorry homology after doing the vertical homology uh, of our double complex. Right, so just use the vertical differentials to compute homology, and then the leftover, use the horizontal um, differentials to compute homology of that. And then this cooks up the homology of our total complex. And then we had another filtration where we used the rows, and that gave us, again, a spectral sequence with E2 page, only now we did vertical homology after doing horizontal, did I say cohomology? Homology. I don't even know. Okay, anyway, uh, use the horizontal differentials first this time, then the vertical differentials, but you converge to the same thing. Okay, well, that was kind of a lazy thing to say, so let me give you a word of warning here. So it's possible, when I say these both converge to the same thing, I'm not saying that they have the same E infinity page. So it's possible that you compute the infinity page for the column filtration, and it's not the same as the E infinity page for the row filtration. But what do I mean when I say that they converge to the same thing? They're both associated gradients. to really different filtrations. And that's why they might not be the same. Oops, that was supposed to be different in parentheses. Um, and that's unreadable. Okay, so what am I trying to say? I, I'm going to get associated graded to different filtrations because I filtered things differently of the homology of the total complex. But they're associated graded of the same thing if, if you ignore the filtration piece. So if I can solve all the extension problems and know the answer, then I should get the same thing. Okay, so uh, I said a good source for this is Vakil's uh, spectral sequences friend or foe, this nice little note, and, and I think that's a great little introduction. Um, one of the things that he uses this spectral sequence for a double complex to prove is the snake lemma, but the way that we've gone about things that feels a little bit circular since we used the long Zach sequence in homology to construct the spectral sequence. I, I feel like we must know already that the snake lemma holds. So let me do a different application. Uh, which he does do, though in slightly different grading than, than we've set up, and that's the five lemma. So let's prove the five lemma using these spectral sequences. So what does the five lemma say? Well, I want to start with a, a diagram. So I've got A, B, C, D, E. Maybe here, let me give myself V. W, X, Y, and Z. Okay, and so in this diagram, these rows will be exact. And then I've got a map between these, making all the squares commute. And I'm going to name these alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon. And uh, again, my grading is set up slightly differently from, from Bakil's notes. So I'm using some of the same notation and some different. I'm sorry about that. But this is just going to be a commuting diagram. Uh, 
with exact rows, as I said. And of course, as you know, from the five lemma. Okay, so what does the five lemma tell us? Well, there's a few versions. Let's just do the sort of nicest version for this case, though you can do this, um, use this technique more generally. So let's say alpha, beta, delta, and epsilon are isomorphisms. Then the five lemma tells us that gamma is an isomorphism too. Okay, and we can relax those conditions a little bit, but let's not bother for now. I just want to show you that, you know, the sort of machinery of the spectral sequence can, can do a lot for us. Okay, so how are we going to prove this? Uh, well, maybe I'll start writing proof here, though I'm about to run out of space. So the idea is to use the two spectral sequences for a double complex on this double complex. So the two spectral sequences for the homology of the total complex and compare. Now, at first, this might seem like sort of a strange thing. How could that be interesting? But it's a surprisingly powerful technique. Um, so, oh gosh, I'm going to have a hard time keeping this all on the same page at the same time because I write so big. Um, but let me try a little bit. So let's say we think about the row version first. So what do I mean there? I just mean, let's do DH first. Okay, so we take homology with respect to the rows. And remember, the rows were exact. So we're not going to get any homology there. Well, really, we're just not going to get any homology in the middle spots, right? I, I don't have zeros on the ends, so I don't know that I'm exact on the ends. So maybe let me say, I don't know, I get some A bar and some E bar. And I, I don't mean anything very precise about those. I just mean, um, well, that A bar is, the, is A mod the image of this map, whatever that is. And... Uh, and then I guess E bar is just the kernel of this map. So maybe I should be using different symbols, but I don't even care what they are. I just mean there's something. Okay, then we'll have basically the same thing for the bottom row. So I don't know, there's some V bar, but we're exact in the middle. And then the last one was some Z bar. Okay, again, I, I don't care what the things are, but now uh, I should on the next page, on this E1 page, use the vertical maps. Of course, the maps between the zeros are not particularly interesting. Um, I don't know what alpha and epsilon do on these things, so let me not worry about it. But let's just compare it to going the other way. So let's say that we did the column version. Then we would do the vertical maps and take homology with respect to those first. And now remember the whole point here in the five lemma is that those vertical maps are mostly isomorphisms. The only question one, questionable one is that middle one. Okay, so when I take homology with respect to these isomorphisms, what am I going to get? Well, mostly zeros. So I've got zero there, zero there. I don't know what I have in the middle. Let's call that C bar. And I think this was X bar. And again, I just mean, you know, uh, kernel and co-kernel and whatnot, whatever that is. Um, and then I'll be left with some horizontal differentials on the next page. So this is my E1 page using the column filtration. And uh, the point is that when I look in the total degrees where I have this X bar and this C bar, well, when I look up in the other version, I've got zeros there. And so no matter what happens on successive pages, no matter what these maps are, those are going to be zeros. Okay, so let's, let's take note of that. So these are, uh, 
zeros in the interesting degrees. I guess I could count what degrees those are, but I'm not going to bother. And remember that these converge to associated gradients of the same thing. Now, maybe corresponding to different filtrations, but uh, there are no extension problems for zero by zero, right? So there, it's got to be zero um, in those degrees based on these cases. And so it's got to be that this X bar and the C bar, whatever they are, they're going to converge to the same thing, then that has to be zero. So C bar is the same as X bar is equal to zero. But how did C bar and X bar show up? Well, we took homology here with respect to this vertical map. So uh, C bar was just the kernel of that gamma and X bar uh, was the co-kernel, I suppose. And so since those are both zero, this tells us that gamma is an isomorphism. Okay, and so that proves the five lemma. So I think that's kind of a cute, neat argument just because we didn't really need a ton of the power of spectral sequences, except that there are these spectral sequences and they converge to the same thing. And we don't even know how to compute most of the spectral sequence, but we see, oh, well, if we're gonna get zeros in this one version, then we better get zeros in this other version. And so we actually learn something that's sort of unrelated to spectral sequences um, on, on the face of it. Okay, so in the next, uh, we of course already know the five lemma. So in the next video, I wanna prove something which, again, maybe you know another way, but I, I suspect you've just been told and not actually had it proved. So we'll see a sort of longer, more extensive application of this spectral sequence for a double complex.